hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Now, when I made my prehistoric nettle video a few weeks ago, I thought I was really just going to be explaining my take on a very important piece of recent research and setting about making some nettle fabric. I was completely unprepared for the amount of interest there's been from people all around the world in this. I've had some very, very useful I've had some very useful conversations with the authors of the paper, which is fantastic. Um, but I've also been in touch with people researching um, Egyptian linen splicing, splicing in Japan. I've been talking to one of the, the university-based experimental archaeology centres. Loads and loads and loads of people had really useful thoughts. And um, I've asked to do some collaborations in a couple of cases. Uh, instances which is really really exciting so I've got an awful lot more nettle picking to do and like all of these projects it's raised loads more questions than are answered in the first instance I've moved away from the river to do the next bit it dawned on me the sound of the water in the background probably wasn't very helpful anyway I've picked about 30 nettles for this morning's batch and I'm going to divide them into three batches. In the last video you might recall that I picked them, I split them, I peeled off the bast and then I just scraped them very very lightly before putting them to dry. But as I've worked with those it has become apparent that just, just maybe, maybe I don't need to scrape them. So I'm going to do two batches of the picked, split and peeled ones. Half that I scraped, exactly as I did in the last one, half that I just peel and then leave to dry. We'll see what happens there. The third batch I'm just going to leave as nettles. I'm going to dry them out. We don't think that people in prehistory are retting their nettles, although lots of modern people do. However, just in case anything changes and I need to do some retting experiments over the winter, I'm going to put some bundles of nettles by just as they are nice and dry. I've also had some suggestions of other methods. Somebody who watched the last video suggested I try chewing the nettles and actually that works really really well. So for the ones that are just getting split and peeled some of them I was crushing like I was last time just beating them slightly with a stick some of them I'm just using a knife and this is a, a blunt table knife that I use as an alternative to a flint sometimes. Oh this one's a tough one tough ones when I'm trying to film them. I think they know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, with a knife, usually doesn't take as long as this. That's it. Thumbnails work too. Split the nettle. snap and peel away the bass strips. Now one of the things that came to mind while I was working on the last batch was to wonder how long this part of the process took in relation to the, the, the splicing, the plying and, and the weaving of the final project. And I can certainly time myself and I have uh, but it seemed like a really good opportunity to do a little bit of citizen science, a bit of crowdsourced experimentation. So on the Nettles for Textiles Facebook group, and it's a big group if you're interested in nettle textiles, I do recommend it. I put out a call for volunteers to time themselves, picking, splitting by whatever method suited them and peeling, just getting it to this stage. And that's ongoing. That experiment's going to be running until the end of August. I've had about 30 responses so far, where people have told me the size of the batch that they've picked, how they've processed it, how long the whole batch took, and uh, how long, on average then, it took them to pick, split, and peel a nettle just down to this first bark stage. Now, of course, none of us are prehistoric people so there are going to be things that we just haven't thought about or things that may have been relevant back then that aren't relevant to us now but hopefully that combined average and the information on the fastest and the slowest 
possibilities for getting to this point from a standing nettle will give us some factors that when we've worked out how many nettles go into a finished volume of cloth, we can say, well, two minutes of that per nettle or whatever was the initial picking and processing. It starts giving us some ideas as to how nettles may have been handled in the past and the investment of time because that also then gives us a sense of the value of a piece. Something that's very, very quick to make is generally worth less and don't think about money in this instance it's, it's whatever the given that's a tough one again the, the given value of worth is than something that takes a long time and involves a lot of skill so i'm going to peel some more nettles so i'm going to peel 10 and just leave them as bast i'm going to peel 10 give them a quick scraping like i did in the last one 10 i'll carry home as is and then we'll start having a little look at some more basic statistics of the nettles that I've dried so far and hopefully that will carry us into the next video which is the one I was going to make to start with uh, which will be more about how the splicing and plying went and eventually how the weaving goes. So I'm going to enjoy my view, there's some lovely ducks to keep me company and I'm going to keep going with my nettles. This is the bundle of 10 that's been lightly scraped and you can probably see they're not over scraped and I'm trying not to work them too much, just enough to start releasing those white fibres and the rest will happen when I rub them when they're dry and scrape them with a flint. So for now we'll just make them into a neat little bundle, makes it easy to carry them home and if I compare that to the bundle of unscraped ones, there's a definite size difference and I did try and equalise the uh, nettles so I had the same amount of tall ones and short ones and fat ones and thin ones but they're still quite a bulky thing. Let's get these home, let's get these dried and we'll think about some of those questions that have come up. Back at home now and my bundles of nettle fibre have been unravelled to dry. It's very important not to let them go musty. This is the very slightly scraped. You can see really plenty of green there still but the fibres are starting to show and the completely un scraped still in quite fat ribbons and then the stalks of nettle put by just in case I need them for retting experiments later once those are dry they'll hold pretty much forever so I think it's time to make a cup of tea always important and have a look at last week's fibre batch and address some of those questions that have been arising sometimes the questions are unexpected my current one is does having a lardy orange cat sleep on your nettle fibre help with its long-term storage qualities? And it turns out this is an ongoing problem. The next day he's back again. Oh, Tesla, look at this tummy. Does a fat cat middle really, really help or not with the quality of your nettle fibre? This is possibly a scientific question for another day. For the moment, um, I think I'll let him snooze. I'll come back to this in a minute. Having finally got my tea and got rid of the cat, this is some of last week's harvest. So this batch is 50 peeled but not scraped nettles. This is 50 peeled and very, very lightly scraped nettles. And again, I try to equalise the batch as best I can so they're similar size and shaped nettles. And you can see the difference is you know, certainly there. Now, I'm not going to go into huge amounts of details with statistics on these, but I am going to take some basic records as I go along. So what I'm going to try and do, if I can manage to work out how to fit these onto my tiddly little set of accurate scales, is find out what they weigh, and then I can work out the weight of an average nettle. In theory, if I do this at different stages of processing, this will let me work out how many nettles go into a given batch of fabric. So... I think we'll start with the scraped ones because I think they're going to be easier to roll up. So if I make that into a rough bundle, at least these are quite flexible. Okay, let's pop those on the scales. And I don't know if you can see that or not but I can it is 34.67 grams 
and that's for 50 nettles. Okay, I think you see the bits coming off us already, can't you? I think the peeled but not scraped ones are going to be a little more complicated to make into a bundle, but we'll we'll try. They're definitely stiffer, but you would expect that. Okay, so uh, those ones are. Changing their mind every 30 seconds. Take those off and put them back on again. Have I got zero? I've got zero. Actually, I think maybe they were touching somewhere. Oh dear. Those are 65.65. So not that far off double the weight. So what I think I'm going to do next is um, I'll weigh them all again just to double check that I haven't made errors because obviously with a biggish bundle and a very small set of scales if anything touches the surface that's not going to be great. Then I'm going to work out the weight of an average nettle and then I'm going to split these into bundles I think that represent 10 nettles so each of these I'm going to split up into five bundles. That's going to give me lots of reasonably equal samples that I can do different things to. So I'm going to do that and uh, then we'll see what the bundles look like. Okay, well, several slightly fraught minutes later. You know that saying about how the first casualty is always the plan? Well, you can probably tell from the mess here that I was getting some serious fallout from winding these into smaller bundles. I'm glad I wasn't running the camera because I might have said a rude word once or twice. Anyway, I've ended up with five little bundles that were within quarter of a gram of each other and I did end up reweighing everything quite a lot of times. You know, that's actually going to be fine for this particular experiment. It's always something that if it proves useful can be repeated and I will weigh any future batches. So I've made these into little bundles and it's very very clear already that they want to shed all that extra material so the next stage will be to rub um, most of these between my hands although at least one I'll keep back as a control. These little fibre bundles are actually known archaeologically there's some slightly bigger ones known slightly tidier ones too known from Must Farm uh, that have been identified as probably being nettle fibre and it's just really nice to think that what comes naturally to me to wind this round a hand and twiddle the middle is pretty much what our earlier ancestors were doing too I think they'd had more practice than I had though anyway I've decided I'm not going to try and break this down this is the unscraped fibre until it's had its first rubbing. It's too um, brittle and I got into such a mess doing these ones that although I will split those I might give these a rub first. So what comes next? Well the more I think about it the more things I think I could try but mostly I've got to get on with the splicing. So I'm going to do some quite straightforward uh, processing experiments. I said at least one of these will be a control, then the rest I will rub between my palms for the same amount of time each. I'll use a pinger, I'll take a note, I'll record the weights at the end so for ongoing thing. Uh, some of them will then be scraped using flint tools again for a set amount of time to soften them. You saw me doing that in the previous video. Um, at least one though I probably won't do that to. And then I'll start splicing up making the end results into little balls ready to be plied. Probably exactly the same process for this one. It will get divided up into uh, bundles that represent 10 nettles. One will go as a control. The rest will get rubbed between my hands again for a set amount of time. Uh, although I might do it for several different lengths given that this hasn't been scraped at all so there's more to come off. Uh, softened again by scraping over with a flint blade. Uh, then we'll start splicing. That's a bit better. This is the 
unscraped nettle fibre. This bundle is my control, uh, a fifth of it, so um, you know, 10 nettles worth. The rest of it has had four minutes rubbing so far. It's amazing how much more flexible that's made it. I'm trying to fire up an old Dynalite USB microscope at the moment so that I can take some really close-up images of stage by stage. But for now, a bit more processing and then I can start with the splicing just had a really exciting parcel through the post. This is a big batch of experimental flints for me to use. Now this was my collaboration um, package. So I've been talking to the York Experimental Archaeology Research Centre, they call themselves the Year Centre for short, and they very kindly sent me three batches of very similar flints. And the idea is that I'm going to use these while processing but on different batches of fibre and we'll be able to look at them at the end to see if there are any visible wear marks in use. So three groups. One group will be used on wet scraped nettles, so picking them, scraping them while they're still fresh. One group will be used on working with the stuff that's been peeled and then dried. The third group will probably be used on dry nettles that were wet scraped so I know they sort of overlap with that one but it's different stages in their life cycle as you if you like um, so what I'm going to need to do is keep these in their little baggies and record times as I work with each one but that won't slow me down a great deal it won't make me think about what I'm doing and hopefully we'll get some interesting results at the end of it I do love this collaborative work that's the whole point of experiments like this. Gets lots of people thinking and we all come up with new ideas on how we can look for information. Right, that will definitely do for this video. This was only meant to be a quick update just to tell you why you haven't seen the actual splicing in action yet. I've got loads to keep me out of mischief. I've got my dry nettles that weren't scraped, my scraped from wet nettles, I've got my lovely flint tools, I've got a new microscope on order because my old one turned out to be a bit rubbish. Uh, I'm going to get on with it. Hopefully the next video will show actual proper splicing and some plying and us starting to think about the weaving and a bit of an update on how the citizen science has gone and how this collaborative work's going. Until then, if you're still picking nettles, happy nettling. If it's not the end of August and you want to join in with my experiment, either put a note in the comments and I'll point you at the link or hop onto the Nettles for Textiles page and I'll be back before you know it with an update. Bye for now. And more post. New microscope. Need to charge up but hopefully this will really help me see what's going on close up as we process and splice these nettles.